Hello my soccer universe, it's the last video of the year and as always it's time to look back at this year 2023, a year to be honest where the on-field action probably was not so prominent as in other years, you know we didn't have a big international tournament although there was one of course that uh, will of course feature but there was a lot of off-field stuff that really really made some headlines as well which will be reflected in this video but before that before i go through the moments that moved me very very quickly also 2023 has been on one side a challenging but also a beautiful year for me but you have it seen that sometimes uh my output was kind of a little bit shaky and and so on, which was a reflection of how things went uh for me personally and so yeah i try to also learn from that a teeny little bit don't want to go into any de 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 details i'm gonna keep on making videos i love making videos but i have to do it on a more uh on like more than I can do than on a have to do basis. But you know, all goes out. The short videos honestly are a save saver for me. That's for sure. But besides that, let's talk about the what I call the top 10 moments. I, you know, I during the year I make some notes and then um, over the last few days I try to uh, let the year pass kind of month by month and look at some stories that really moved me that I found remarkable also listening to other podcasts and, and some of what they said were the top stories and then I come up with an order an order that you should not take for um, fully serious yes the top moment is my personal top moment and I would say number two and number three are as well however for the other moments I always try to find a little thread to connect these so it might be for instance and I don't know at this moment what the really no moment number five the moment number five is not as important as moment number eight for instance and now it will be interesting which moments I chose here but you know it I want to tell also the story of 2023 well, when I started editing uh, this video, I realized this is going to be a heck of a long video if I release it as a whole. And so I made the decision since it will be 30th and the 31st to release it in two parts. And you get one part today and the other one on the 31st. And so without further ado, here is the first story that moved me for 2023. <music> Okay, this first story also fits kind of with the time of the year, you know, end of the year celebration fireworks and I mean literal fireworks. Yes, there were fireworks on the field as well and there were some great stories in Austria, you know, Sturm Graz almost making a title push, uh, leading the league then in the fall as well uh, with a top three. We had some small teams going up and down. So there were some really inter interesting things, but the most serious story uh, that I think came out of the Austrian moments are uh, the insane amount of fireworks that have been playing. And Austria, the Austrian league, I usually saw as a little quaint league. Well, if you watch what the Sturm Graz fans did at this year's cup final in Klagenfurt, and in response to also the Rapid fans, who also did their share, fair share of pyrotechnics, uh, it is next level. This is really next level, the amount of fireworks that have been put up there. Then they doubled it up in the league game against um, uh, Red Bull Salzburg, a uh, great game, but they had to be stopped because they again pulled tons of fireworks up. <laughs> Next weekend, uh, it was Rapid, I think against Sturm Graz, also the ultra celebrating a big birthday, the oldest ultra group in Austria, also pulling up fireworks and displays all over the place. And then to top it off at the cup derby between Austria Salzburg and Red Bull Salzburg, the Austria Salzburg fans also made a firework display just uh before uh just before the second half kicked off that was for a really small team really very much next level those are displays that i'm used to see from let's say more the balkan side of things uh i never thought i'd see that in austria it is spectacular but it caused also a huge uproar under the is it safe should it be there will be bans the game has to be postponed and all that kind of stuff but this was a very remarkable story that's still ongoing in a way 
Okay, I really don't like to tell negative stories, but this is a negative story that has been going on all year. That formerly big clubs are having been close to relegation zones and also clubs that even won this season titles completely went in a tailspin afterwards. And here are some five that I will mention. Um, Barcelona probably are the least troubled ones, although they have been huge financial trouble that also need to be resolved. But Barcelona won the Spanish championship in a very, I call it Barça Nacho or Catalan Nacho, I heard also style. Um, but this season they uh, look everything but okay and the whole transfer politic and so on they're just in a huge mess and now we even hear a ban for Europe is on the cards. Lyon probably the biggest representative of this entire collective. Um, they have been last place. This is a team that were in the Champions League semi-final in 2020. A team that has it's already more than a decade ago that have been dominating French football, were always a top team, had an ownership takeover, it's a complete meltdown. Yes, as of late, they have lifted themselves out of relegation trouble, but this was one of the big stories in Ligue 1. A story that I'm almost too tired to talk because I hear about it so often, Manchester United. Yes, they won the League Cup. Eric Ten Hag looked like the greatest uh, thing since sliced bread. And finally, someone can turn around Manchester United. Just a few weeks later, they lose 7-0 at Anfield. 7-0 at a Liverpool team that was not great. Yes, it was a freak result because, uh, especially the first half, it was never 7-0. But the way they imploded and it has not looked good ever since. Onana, the battle of the Champions League, Onana made many errors uh, in the Premier League. Yes, they had now before Christmas a good performance, but other than that, United are in true, true trouble. As Art and Hag's former team, is it because he left? I don't know, but what Ajax are showing, especially in the first um, part of the new Eredivisie season, it was already not great last season, where it had some rough runs in there. Uh, but again, they finished for the first time without a title in a long time, but at least they finished in a Europa League uh, spot this season. Ajax at one point was last. It was always a deceiving last place, but they were in last place because they had uh, still a few games to catch up to. At the moment, it seems unlikely that they're even going to make a Champions League spot unless they're put in a serious run. And then there's a team that I almost have forgotten to talk about. A team that in 21 won the freaking Champions League. What was it, 20? Won the Champions League. Corona season, they won the Champions League. Yes, Chelsea. The only time that they show up is during a transfer window. And yes, the transfer window in the summer was actually kind to them. They're splashing cash and uh, money and so on, buying a lot of talents, and the team is going absolutely nowhere. Okay, this story would feature much higher if it would have ended the other way. But the way Dortmund threw away the Bundesliga title uh, is something I will never forget. Bayern have now won 11 in a row. And it's not only the last day where it was kind of a head-to-head -head and then suddenly Dortmund, without them doing much, are champions again. It's also the build-up where both teams kind of threw away chances and Bayern really doing the best to not win this title. Losing big at Mainz, losing on the second to last day um, to Leipzig at home in a way that it was just there for Dortmund to take. Dortmund themselves had some rough results, like I remember a draw at Bochum that they probably should have won. But then it comes down, all you need to do, a Mainz team that after the Bayern win has lost, 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 lost. And they go up 2-0 in Dortmund. And to top it off, one of the best stories of the year, uh, Alea is missing a penalty to make it 1-1, something that would have completely turned around the season. Yes, Dortmund can equalize late. It would not, was not enough because of goal difference. They needed some outside help. Bayern had a 1-0 lead. Kern equalized in the 80th minute. And then Musiala in the 89th fires them to the 11th title in a row. It was a gut punch. It was a real gut punch. And it really, and probably this will last for, for a while, um, I'm done with Dortmund. Honestly, uh, it's already hard 
to a cheer for Dortmund because they are the only other team that is realistically a chance, that is a good club. But it never have been one of my favorite, favorite, favorite clubs, so they are kind of the giant of the rest. And now, make mugging up this way, I'm done with them. <laughs> I'm literally done with them for a while at least. Well, there had to be a Milan point, and since it was not a vintage a year for Milan, Milan are not finishing high on this countdown. And yes, uh, it's probably not a top story, although it had a lot of emotional involvement on my part. 2023 was a very, very sketchy year for Milan. Um, you lost all the chances of defending your title in the first few weeks of the year where you were just abysmal leaking goals left and right. You turn it around. Thanks also to Giroud scoring that goal against Torino. You turn it around a little bit. You make one of the best performances of any Serie A team by going to Naples and beating the champions to be 4-0 at their home ground, showing how great you can be. Make it even to the Champions League sem semi-final. It's still a little, little bit sketchy here, here, here and there, but even the Champions uh, semi-final leaves a sour taste more on that a little bit later as well. However, you finish in the Champions League spot. Also, thanks to you were being docked points, because otherwise Milan would not have been in the Champions League despite being in the semi-final this year round. Luck of the draw also playing a part in that. But then, and this is the big story for me, within a few days everything crumbles. We had to take over, Redbird is stepping in, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is saying goodbye to football, retiring in front of a full San Siro. Tears were there, I had tears in myself and I saw Paolo Maldini handing him the final gifts and and so on and if it would have there i think the season 22 23 would have ended for me on a high note next day maldini gets fired milan without maldini still cannot fathom it yes his transfer record was not that great but this is just a no-go in many ways then a few days later silvio berlusconi passes away. Yes, he has not been a figure for Milan, but he's so connected to Milan and all the uh, Super League ideas and so on uh, that are now floating. This is all based on Berlusconi in, in, in a way. So this huge figure died. So it was everything around Milan was kind of rotting away. You turn around it actually. On the summer, I think you got in a lot of transfers. You could sell Tonale, which is the transfer of the century. It has to be because you made a lot of money and you got a lot of players in. And the squad looks really good to the start of the season until Inter completely steamroll you. And since then, it's sketchy at best. Uh, you had a tough champ, Champions League group where if you just take your chances, you would have made it. You probably would have deserved to make it out of this group. Uh, and yeah, towards the end of, of the year, there's another change afoot. So, yeah. But that summer, these few days in late May, early June, those were crazy times for it to be a meal. Well, with Serie A being more or less a victory parade for the champions elect, and more on them later for sure, um, the Italian teams could focus on Europe and it made it a real Serie A resurgence in Europe with seven teams going to the knockout phases, Lazio being out third, and six into the quarterfinals. We had five in the semis and three made it to the finals. The only downside is that no one won a European Cup, which has been a while for an Italian team. Yes, no, not actually. Roma won it the year before uh, the Conference League, but you know, one of the bigger ones uh, has been a uh, while. And there were some really good performances in there. Yes, the Champions League was very much the luck of the draw that all the Italian teams ended on one si uh, side. And yes, from a Milan perspective, I knew that the one team that Milan will play perform best against is Napoli because they do well against Napoli for some reason, especially in Naples. They didn't have to play, the winner has to play Inter. It was laid up for Inter to make it to the final. And yes, Inter have been the best Italian team in 2023. That's for sure. They even in the final had, although no one gave them a chance, they had a real good shot at actually making it all the way. And I think lost unluckily this final. The closest team, however, was Roma, who made it to the final uh, against Sevilla, a Sevilla team that probably should have featured before in one of those winners to losers uh, part 
A Sevilla team that had ousted Juventus, probably even deservedly so, weirdly enough. Although Juventus gave it their all because everyone was looking, this could be a Juve Roma final. In the final, Roma played actually quite well, had the lead, and then they went ultra defensive, and Sevilla could equalize and they lose the penalty shootout. And then, in addition, Mourinho disgraces himself by really going wacko on the referee and ugly scenes ensued. Fiorentina were, I think, the better team in the final against West Ham um, and lost unluckily in a t final that also will be, for me, always be tarnished by the appalling behavior by the West Ham fans, which really tilted it for me. And then I was gutted that Fiorentina actually lost that one. Yes, West Ham is probably over a better team, but on the night, I think Fiorentina played better but didn't win it. So that was a little bit of a downer, but on the on the other side, Serie A is back, baby. Let's hope that with the growth decree not being prolonged, that it will stay this way. It might turn the other way. To be fair, this is not a topic that really, really excites me, but I think the feat in, in itself is worth mentioning. In a league where Arsenal looked very much uh, at one time running away with it, with City stumbling, City again find the next gear and pip are or Arsenal in such a way that even few rounds uh, to go, City are the new champions. And dominatingly so, and yes, with Erling Haaland they probably had the player of the year, although he didn't win any awards. Probably also due to uh, running a little bit cold, especially in decisive stages of the Champions League. They also win the FA Cup final in the Manchester Derby, that was not an easy win also has to be said so uh that was two down and one to go and then in the champions league i mean if you wanted to make it hard for city the draw was hard because you faced the best team remaining in the quarterfinals with bayern munich and while bayern munich probably was better than the three nil you won three nil at home and then you got an easy away win and you were cruising real madrid you just pushed aside this was a team that hurt you last year really really big you just brushed real madrid aside uh it was scintillating what manchester city were showing and that without erling Haaland, especially in the return leg however the final the final yes you won it through a rotary goal and uh weirdly enough rotary seems to be the one player that manchester city cannot afford to lose but you get it done the rotary goal wins it um but if romelu lukaku is not the clumsiest striker of the world and yes he is also a story in itself uh this game goes to overtime if not you lose it in regulation inter gave it their all in that one however city win it and guardiola finally wins a champions league without messi and the big dream is there it still doesn't feel like a good story it still doesn't um but it is impressive what Guardiola and City have been building. It's one of the finest teams that I've ever seen. The only downside, they play brilliantly. You watch them, it's so clean. But that's also the downside. It's not exciting to me. But hey, they are again, despite having a rough start to the season, they won the Club World Cup. Very, very easy this time around. Julian Alvarez is now a player that has won everything that can be won within a year it's also a remarkable story although i don't really wanna push it too much i think this city are still the favorites to win the premier league again and probably also the champions league and let's see where it goes from here okay this is where i'll end the first part uh after position number five four four three two one plus a few honorable mention stories that also moved me but just quite didn't make the cut or just didn't fit the storyline i will refer you to tomorrow's final installment of the top 10 moments of 2023 up until then i will talk to you soon hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day Bye.